The faces of young Israelis who came to this field to party, dying where they danced. Six months on, there is still grief and disbelief at the site of the music festival, where more than 300 people were killed by Hamas attackers. Relatives and friends hold posters of their loved ones and anger towards the government. We haven't received any um, um, invitation or whatever from any official in the government, so we are very, very disappointed. Angrier still are those whose posters show their relatives held hostage in Gaza. They believe their loved ones could be saved by a deal. But the idea of a truce is still intolerable to many. At one point, a speeding car plows into protesters, injuring five. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reiterating again today, there'll be no ceasefire until after all the hostages are released. Surrendering to Hamas's demands will allow it to try and repeat the crimes of October the 7th again and again, as it has promised to do so. Hamas hopes that the pressure from the outside and the inside will make Israel surrender to these extreme demands. It will not happen. Israel is ready for a deal. Israel is not ready to surrender. But today, there are new threats from old enemies. Iran publishing this list of nine missiles that can reach Israel and a warning Israeli embassies are no longer safe after a suspected Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus last week. In Gaza, Netanyahu claims they are one step away from victory. Today, the Israeli military withdrew more troops from southern Gaza. But make no mistake, this is still a very active war and won the majority of Israelis still back. No one said that this would be easy. No one said that this would be short. Most Israelis still very much support the government's continued effort to uh, defeat and weaken Hamas. That is still the, uh, the, the vast majority of Israelis. Most Israelis want to see the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, go into Rafah in the southern Gaza Strip, and they want to see the return of the hostages. But while Israelis are closely following the war, they are largely shielded from seeing these pictures from Gaza. The Israeli military are leaving a wasteland in their wake. What does the future hold when your cities look like this? Massa was born on October 7th. Rola's waters broke as she sheltered from Israeli airstrikes. <laughs> There is no future now. The house is gone. There's no life now. I can't imagine how we'll get back to the north of Gaza to find houses without electricity, water and sewage. All of our lives will be spent in a tent. It's certainly going to be a hard life. A new generation that's only heard the soundtrack of 24-7 Israeli drones and knows little else than death and starvation. Emily Wither reporting. Hard to forget those images of brutality, massacre and abuse perpetrated by Hamas, a prescribed terrorist organisation on October the 7th, exactly six months ago. One of the first places subject to attack that morning, as we've just heard, was the Nova Music Festival close to the Gaza-Israel border, where thousands were partying at sunrise. Over 360 people were murdered at the site, with many more being taken hostage, some of whom are among the 133 still held held in captivity in Gaza. Hamas rampaged through towns, kibbutzes and military bases that day, killing 1,200 people, then taking over 250 hostages, the worst single loss of life in one day in Israel's history. Our correspondent Andy Davis has been speaking to Steve Brisley from Bridgend in South Wales. His sister Leanne and two teenage nieces, Noya and Yahel, were killed in the Biri kibbutz. His brother-in-law, Eli, taken hostage. His family, he says, are unable to grieve while they wait day in, day out for news of Eli's safety. And Leanne was very funny. Um, Noya was a terrible singer, a great dancer. Um, Yehel was a, a, a bundle of energy, a bundle of joy. Um, and you try and sort of remember that and, and, and remember the good things and try not to focus too much on the, on, on the way that they died because that way madness lies.
Steve Brisley's sister Leanne, her husband Ellie, and their daughters Yahel and Noya were at home at Kibbutz Beri, close to the Gaza border, when the Hamas gunmen came. She sent a message to my older brother to say, there are terrorists in our house, I can hear them, I can hear them shouting, die Israel. We know that my sister and two nieces were killed inside the, uh, the, the safe room. Um, they were each shot. Um, we don't know whether Ellie saw that happen or whether he was taken out um, before, they were, before they were killed. So as things stand, he's been over 180 days in captivity and we don't even know if he knows his, his family, his world um, have, have all been killed. Earlier this year, Hamas said that Ellie's brother Yossi, here on the left, also taken hostage, had been killed. Ellie was last reported alive in November. Steve says they've heard nothing since. What hope is there, do you think, that he is still alive? Well, it's, the, it's a cliche that they say it's the, it's the hope that kills you, but hope is all that we've, all that we've got. But being realistic, the... Israeli authorities have already said that of the 130 or so hostages that remain, they have information to suggest that 30 of them are already dead. Hamas themselves has released information to suggest that in excess of 70 of the remaining hostages are, are dead. So you start thinking about, has he got a one in three, one in four, 50-50 chance of being alive? Um, the longer the war goes on, the less chance it seems of, of, of him getting out alive. It is months since the last hostage release deal. Steve Brisley says Israel's moral obligation to secure further releases is not being fulfilled. That the UK and others must bring more pressure to bear on the Israeli government to bring about a ceasefire. If, if anyone thinks that the hostages are going to get out alive without a ceasefire and a deal, then you know, they're, they're delusional. So that's why a deal has to be done and it has to be done now. And what do you make of the scenes coming out of Gaza, the utter humanitarian catastrophe unfolding there? I have a lot of sympathy for, for the innocents that are, that, that are being killed. It, it is a humanitarian uh, crisis. I think part of the problem is, is that people are making it too much of a binary choice that you can only have sympathy for one side or, or the other, and I don't believe that's the case. Israel envelops you and your girls today. Steve and his parents couldn't attend the funeral of his sister and nieces, with flights suspended at the time, so they had to watch huddled around a phone at home in South Wales as someone filmed it for them. Then, earlier this year, his parents made the journey to Israel. They feel her loss every day. Um, they went to uh, the kibbutz um, in February. It was Leanne, would, would have been Leanne's 49th birthday, and they visited the graves. They visited her house. Um, they brought a few items back. Um, they brought back Leanne's favourite teddy bear. Mum sleeps with that in her in her room now, and she says she 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 speaks to him every morning and every every night as though she's speaking to Leanne. Can I ask you finally what would it mean for you for Ellie to be released? Presumably, you've tried to visualise that moment many times. Yes, uh, I suppose it's. It's being back with him and, 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 and helping him to recover from, uh, fr from events. And I think him coming home safely would perhaps be the greatest memorial possible to the lives of Leanne, Noya and Yehel. So I just hope that whatever, what, uh, whatever he's seen, whatever he knows, that he's just held on to that little bit of hope that uh, he, can, he can rebuild his, uh, his, his life and, and that we'll help him do that.